I'm Nick Wykowski and I'd like to show you how to compile and submit patches to the Apache Flex project. In particular, I'm going to be showing how to use this with IntelliJ 11.1. So some of the prerequisites. Before you even start, uh, you will need a few things installed on your computer. Notably, you will need the Java JDK 1.5 or 1.6. Currently, uh, the Flex SDK does not support Java JDK 1.7. You will need a copy of the Flash Player Global uh, Player Global .swick. You will need the Adobe Air Integration Toolkit. You will need the Pixel Bender Toolkit, and you'll also need a debugger version of the Flash Player. For this demonstration, I'm going to be showing how to install and compile and also submit patches using uh, IntelliJ Ultimate 11.1. Um, a lot of these uh, topics are very similar for other IDEs and there will be other videos available for other IDEs at a later time. When you work with the Apache Flex SDK, uh, as far as compiling and all that type of stuff, you will need about 2 gigs worth of disk space. Now I did lay all this out saying these are things that are required, however you don't necessarily need uh, all these things in order to just work with the Flex SDK. Uh, take a look at incubator apache.org slash flex and you'll actually see a list of all the ways to grab the SDK. Um, once a 4.8.0 release has been released um, you will see or you'll have the ability to download just the binary files uh, which are user contributed or you'll be able to use one of the tools such as uh, the make apache flex for flash builder uh, tool which actually goes and downloads uh, the SDK, all the, all the required components like we listed just here, and it will compile everything for you and set up everything just like you had on the Adobe Flex SDK. But for right now, I'm going to show you how to get started actually grabbing everything right from the source tree, uh, right from the trunk, and compiling your own version and working with it. So we're going to show you how to compile the compiler, the framework, and everything else required to get started working with Flex SDK. Again, this is not required to make Flex applications, only if you want to work with the SDK. Uh, you also need to make sure you have all the prerequisites that are installed in the computer. Uh, Java 1.5 and 1.6 are the only ones that are currently supported, and you need to have the 32-bit version uh, of either one of those installed on your computer. I'm using Java, the JDK version 1.6 32-bit edition uh, for all my work here. So the basic um, way that we're going to be working with this is we're first going to create a new IntelliJ project. We're going to create a new module, which is going to house our frameworks directory. That's really an optional uh, setting or a step. However, that will allow you to work with ActionScript and it actually knows how to read ActionScript and things like that. Uh, you're going to check out the source from the SVN. You're going to create the new frameworks module. You're going to set a couple environment vi uh, variables that pretty much point to these optional applications that are installed, and then we're going to go and compile. So let's go load up IntelliJ. So again, I said I'm using IntelliJ 11.1. Uh, the current version I'm actually using right now is 11.1.2. Um, and we're going to start here and go and create a new project. And we're going to create a project from scratch. I'm going to hit next. And we're going to go call this Apache, Apache Flex. We are going to create a module, and we're going to call that uh, the Apache Flex module. This is essentially going to be the root to all of our SVN stuff, essentially the root or the trunk, trunk to uh, our um, Apache Flex project. Hit next. We're not going to create a source directory. Hit next again. We're not going to install any other desired technologies or things like that. So it's going to go and create a new directory and set up the very, very basic um, project for us. And here we go. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually check out the SVN source. So the first thing, we're, well, in order to do that, we go to the uh, VCS director, our, uh, menu, check out from version control, and we're going to check out from subversion. You notice that Git and GitHub are also in my options as well. Um, the official Apache repository is in subversion at the moment. 
So that's what you're going to have to use. You're going to go and create a new repository. In my case, I already have one set up. Uh, you're going to be pointing it to svn.apache.org with HTTPS slash repos slash ASF slash incubator slash flex slash trunk. If you want to have more information about that, you can actually go to the Apache Flex website, which is incubator.apache.org slash flex. Go to the source code uh, under the development tab and you'll actually see that same directory listed. You can also browse the repository from this uh, website as well. But let's continue. So I'm going to go click on the svn.apache.org slash repos slash asf slash incubator slash flex slash trunk. And I'm going to go check that out. It's going to ask me where I want to check out the uh, particular uh, SDK to. And I'm going to go check it out into the Apache Flex folder and hit OK. And it's just going to verify that I want to check out to the Apache Flex folder the head version and you know I want to go as deep as I can and hit OK. And we are currently using uh, Subversion 1.7. This process here will take quite a few minutes um, and I'm going to pause the video just for the moment so you, go, you don't have to watch this download happening. So after it's downloaded about the 12,500 or so files uh, from our trunk, you'll be asked if you want to check out uh, the project, if we want to open it, uh, I'll say no. And here we go. All the files have been checked out. Now the first thing you'll want to do is check out the readme file. It's extremely important. In here there's a whole bunch of uh, directions on things that you might need. Uh, most important, however, is the prerequisites. So some of the things you'll need are the Java uh, home and like all the Java stuff. So before we go too much further, let's show you how to set the Java version uh, attached to your project. Click on the project name and hit F4, or you can right click and go to open module settings. Within the module settings, you'll want to make sure you're in the modules tab, Apache Flex, and then for module SDK, you'll want to make sure you set this to 1.6 or 1.5. If you don't see 1.6 or 1.5 on the list, however you have it installed, click on New, JDK or JDSK, and then you'll want to point to the JDSK directory that you have it installed in. Again, you'll want to make sure you use the 32-bit version and not the 64-bit version. So now I've got 1.6 uh, selected, I can go hit OK. This will set the default uh, JDK for my project. It will make sure that everything actually installs right. If you have 1.7 installed, you'll probably see a bunch of error messages for like some of the Batik uh, image libraries and things like that, uh, which we don't have compatibility with just yet. So some of the other things that you'll need to uh, grab, which are currently in the README, once this gets finished uh, cleaning up the working copies, You'll need to uh, grab the Adobe Air SDK. Now the Adobe Air and Flex, while they seem like they're kind of one project and they go hand in hand, um, they are actually separate and they're separately licensed projects. So the Adobe Air SDK is a prerequisite and it's under the Adobe uh, licensing agreement. They're allowing you to use that for projects and things like that, but please do read the README files and the licensing files that are required for it. So the Adobe Error Integration Kit, uh, there's two zip files or two files that you could download. One would be for the Mac and one would be for the PC. Uh, as I'm on the PC right now, I'm going to go download this version. So copy that, go into my web browser, paste it in, and you should be able to download that. Now I've already downloaded this in the past, it's a uh, hundred something megabytes I believe. So you want to make sure you do that and extract it to some directory on your computer. I've actually extracted mine to the C drive temp type air directory, and this is essentially what it looks like. So this uh, has all the separate files that you would normally need as a part of the installation. 
Make sure you write down the directory that you extracted this to. You will need that later. The next thing you'll need is a copy of the Flash Player Content Debugger. If you already have Flash Builder installed, if you've already been developing uh, Flex 4.6 applications, you've probably already got this installed. You will need to know where that Flash Debugger uh, application is, so the actual absolute path to Flash, um, Flash Player Debugger.exe. Now, you don't necessarily need to use the default Flash Player Debugger.exe, however, you will need to at least point to one of them, preferably the 11.1 .1 version. So, if you have uh, the uh, Flash Builder 4.6 already installed. You can actually go to the F Adobe Flash Builder uh, directory SDKs. I'm sorry, uh, the Adobe Flash Builder directory Player Win 11.1. .1. So let's go there right now. If I go to my computer, C drive, program files, Adobe, and then you want to go to your Flash Builder directory, go to the Player directory win and 11.1 .1, you'll see flash player debugger.exe again it doesn't necessarily matter which version you go to you know if it's your currently active version or anything else you just need to get you just need to go to that to a version of flash player debugger particularly the 11.1 .1 version pixel bender is a required uh, application you can go to the adobe.com slash go slash pixel bender toolkit zip and that'll just download the zip file for you uh, you uninstall it you or you unzip it you install it and away you go uh, you will need to uh, point it to the pixel bender home or the pic you will need to know which directory install it in and the final thing that you'll need is the player global .swic, or swc for whatever version of flash player you're going to be targeting in our case, you're going to want to target 11.1. Uh, .1. So before we go and uh, download this file here, we're going to go create a new directory. So we're going to go create a new directory. We're going to call that player. No, we don't want to add that to our SVN. And then we're going to, going to create another directory below that, that is 11.1. .1. This is where we're actually going to be storing our uh, player SWIC file. So let's go and copy and paste that URL. It's going to ask us to download that file. We're going to go download that right into my uh, directory here, into my IntelliJ uh, projects folder. So I set Apache Flex, player 11.1, .1, and we'll want to name that playerglobal.swic. Hit save, it downloads it, it should be a pretty small file. When we go back in here, we should see the file show up. With any luck. You need to make sure you rename it to playerglobal.swic, otherwise you will have problems. The last thing that is completely an optional uh, installation is the Adobe Extension Manager. If you already have Adobe Extension Manager, so CS5 or 5.5 installed, you probably already have this. Um, if you don't have it, you don't necessarily need it to compile anything. However, if you're talking about, if you would like to do release or testing changes for the Flash integration SWIC, you'll need to have it installed. This is not a majority of the people. You shouldn't have to worry about it. So there are a couple other things that you will need to be aware of as far as licensing, um, but these things are automatically downloaded for you. So take a look at the software dependencies uh, portion of the README file. Uh, you'll see things like the Batik, you'll see things like Java CC, uh, you'll see things like OSMF and a text layout and things like that that have separate uh, licenses. So they're not automatically downloaded, but the uh, Ant script will uh, download these files for you if you agree to their licensing agreements. So when we go for that, there are a couple other things that are optional. Um, that you can install, including integration with Blaze DS and a couple other things. We won't cover those at the moment. So once you've read the README file, the next thing you're going to want to do is check out the environment properties. So there's the env template.properties and this here is essentially a template file that allows you to define 
all the different uh, items that you have installed. Again, read through this. It's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing to watch out for when you're on Windows, you will need to escape the backslash. So instead of doing a single backslash, you'll be doing two of them. However, you don't have to escape things like spaces and things like that. So in order to use this environment file, uh, you're actually going to make a copy of it. So I'm going to say Control C, Control V, and it's going to be known as env.properties. This is going to be the file that's actually going to be picked up by the ant scripts and everything else. So when I go through here, my uh, air.home file, I actually have these copied out here. So air.home is actually my C drive temp air like I installed earlier, or like I uh, mentioned earlier. The Flash Player Debugger in my case is actually in the uh, my copy of Flash Builder. Player Home is going to be, in my case, it's going to again be the uh, Flash Builder directory, uh, Frameworks Libs Player. And this here is, again, pointing to the 11.1 player.swick. Um, Pixel Bender, I do have that installed. I'm going to go copy that directory as well. Again, this is the directory that I installed it to. And I'm not going to be activating the Adobe Extension Manager. So now we have that file. Again, you shouldn't need to save the file. Uh, you shouldn't need to explicitly save the file. It automatically happens in IntelliJ. And from here, we're pretty much ready to go. Let's go and refresh that. Make sure I have that SWIC file. I do have it right there. All right. So from here, we're pretty much ready to start our compile. Pull up the ant build, and we're going to add the. Uh, the build.xml file and that should, that should have all of our things in here and uh, we just want to make sure that we double check the properties and make sure that we're running under the JDK 1.6 after you've double checked that we're ready to start our compile so I'm going to hit run and we should see a whole bunch of stuff start to happen. It's going to start uh, downloading certain files, uh, ones that have um, license files that are compatible with the uh, compatible with the Apache licensing. Uh, you will be asked for other licenses, so there'll actually be a pop-up if you wish to agree to the licenses of those other uh, applications and things like that. But this ant uh, script. If you have all the prerequisites already installed, should uh, download everything and do everything pretty much for you and compile the compiler, uh, take care of compiling the framework so that you have everything ready to go. This process in my testing does take about 15 minutes or so, so you need to be patient. Um, but as you go through there, watch for any error messages. Uh, you should expect to see some error messages in particular for like you know missing directories and things like that because you haven't run that script up till now but once you've run the script at least once you should be in pretty good shape um, there is one section where there are quite a few warnings that is expected so I'm gonna go pause the recording just for a moment here uh, while the rest of the ant script runs and downloads all the components and does everything that you, that uh, we need to get uh, going. So one of the uh, um, files that got downloaded uh, is asking me to uh, accept that I've read the MPL 1.1 license, uh, which is a compatible license or a downstream license or whatever they call that uh, for Apache. Um, I will need to you know select yes on here and hit OK in order to be able to continue the uh, ant build. You'll see a couple of these here. Uh, you may want to actually read these in the README file that has links to all of these uh, licenses and things like that before you actually start the ant uh, download so that you agree to and you know what the licenses are before they start. So we'll see a few of these right now. It's downloading LSMF right now. This will be another one that needs to be uh, checked. Yep. 
and then it downloads the uh, older SDK for any of the additional uh, things such as some of the Mistella tests and things like that. So once it's finished downloading all the different components, you're going to see it start to compile everything uh, and uh, compile the framework and all that. So I'm going to pause the video again here for a few moments uh, while it's doing all that so you don't have to watch my computer just sit here spin for 15 minutes. So now we've got uh, the entire compiler compiled, the framework compiled, and everything else. So again, if you take a look at the uh, frameworks directory, the libs directory, you'll see a bunch of swicks in there which pretty much represent the uh, project itself. So from here, we're in really good shape. So let's continue on our PowerPoint. So the next thing is, what happens if you want to submit patches or um, essentially help with uh, advance the Apache Flex SDK? So if you're not already a committer, uh, chances are if you're watching this video, you're not already a committer. Um, you won't have commit access to the SVN. So you won't be able to directly submit your patches and uh, your projects and things like that back to the uh, source control. However, you will still be able to um, work on the project and submit uh, bugs and things like that and submitting patches through bugs. So we do that through the JIRA system, so J-I-R-A. JIRA is our project management system or bug tracking system uh, for lack of a better term and uh, it allows you to contribute back that way. That is the official way to contribute content back to the Apache, uh, the Apache Flex project. So the way you do this is first either, so sign up for JIRA or log in if you already have an account. Pick a bug or submit a new one. So when you submit a bug, you're gonna have to fill out the form to say you know pretty much what's wrong and steps to reproduce the bug and things like that. And then what you can do is you can fix it. So now you've downloaded the uh, SDK from the source version, source version control. You can now create patch files and upload those with the, uh, with the ticket. And then of course, you know, once you've uploaded the patch file with the ticket, an uh, Apache committer can take a review the patch, make sure that it meets all the standards and all that type of stuff, make sure it meets the legal requirements. And then we can go and commit that to the trunk. Now the cool thing is, if you start submitting a lot of patches and you start fixing and contributing back to the project, very quickly you'll, you'll find out that you're going to become an Apache committer, or at least be offered to become one. So that's kind of like the carrot in, uh, in front of everybody. If you want to actually like you know get recognition and become a part of the Apache project, the Apache uh, Flex project, start uh, submitting patches, filing bugs, uh, closing bugs, all that type of stuff, and uh, you will quickly become a committer. So let's go show how that actually works. Again, we'll go switch back to uh, IntelliJ. Let's say that we find in the frameworks directory, uh, just for an example here, we'll start and we'll show uh, Jira. So on the Apache website, go to the Jira tab, which will launch uh, issues.apache.org, and it'll bring you right in here. You may need to log in. Uh, again, if on the right-hand side, if you go, um, there'll be a sign-in. If you're not already signed in, um, it'll allow you to either sign in or sign up. Signing up is pretty easy. You just ask for your email address and things like that. Uh, you can see all the issues that have been updated recently. You can see a list of all the issues if you click on the Issues tab. Mind you, right now, there's a lot of issues. So we were able to import all the old Adobe issues that were closed, that were deferred, all that type of stuff, and they're brought into our system. So let's just, for example, take a look at uh, critical uh, unresolved issues. So we can say uh, right here, um, uh, Spark View Stack at uh, this one here. Uh, so let's just pick this one here for an example. Hopefully it's got some good information on it. You know, we see that, you know, steps to reproduce, you know, all this type of stuff here. And uh, can take a look, everything that's going on with it. So this one here is, in particular, is talking about the view stack. So let's go back in here and we can go search for the view stack. So let's hit control F. So 
Sorry, we're going to go find. Usage and files. So text to find. We're going to go find. And that was, again, the view stack. And hopefully we'll be able to find it. And apparently we're finding it a lot. Now, if we knew exactly where this was, we could actually go right to the different um, directories and we can go find it. Let's just say that, let's see here, it's under views, view stack. No, that's setting up a view stack. Regardless, if you know where it is, you can go find it. So in our case right here, let's just go and modify the, this button bars.as file. Jump to source. Let's say that there's something in here that needs to be fixed. Um, we no longer have, um, this is no longer called the button bar control, it's now button bar one. For example, I just made a change to this file here. So now I've made this uh, change to the file. Let's say I go and make it, you know, do another compile, it seems to work fine, I run it against some of my projects, everything seems really cool. So now what I can do is I can actually go and submit this patch back. So within Jira, I can go and say uh, edit, or I can go and make a, let's see here, I can go attach a file, I can go and it'll ask me what file I want to attach. Well, what I need to do is I need to create a patch file for this. To do this, you go back to the changes tab within IntelliJ, and under the local tab, you'll see that one file was changed, button bar.as. I can go say now I want to commit this, but again, I don't necessarily have commit rights to the Apache uh, SVN. So I can go make my comment. A test. And under commit, I can say create patch. It'll then ask me what I want to actually uh, name the patch file. And I can go, let's say, for example, save this on my desktop. Let's see here, where's my desktop at? And I can say... This is issue 1131. I'm just making this number up. Hit OK. And I can hit OK here. It says it's successfully created the patch file. I can show an explorer here that this patch file uh, is right there. And I can go upload that to that ticket. And everything will be fine. So as I continue to do this, I'm now introducing additional patches uh, that make it the committer's life a lot easier so that they can actually see that you are starting to bring back to the project you're uh, producing re reliable and uh, good bugs, uh, not bugs, but uh, good uh, bug fixes and things like that, um, so that you can contribute to the project. And again, you'll become, you'll be asked to become a, an Apache committer should you be uh, doing this more and more. So again, make sure you check out incubator.apache.org slash flex uh, for our current website. Um, and that's about it. So uh, if you have any additional questions, please sign up for our mailing list. We have a very, very active mailing list on the apache.org slash flex website. Uh, you can check it out uh, on the mailing list tab over here. We actually have two uh, mailing lists right now. We have one which is the uh, development mailing lists. So, uh, and then there's a the user's mailing list. So subscribe, you can go see the archives, you can go see what's going on. Both the mailing lists are pretty uh, busy. So you can see right now, just in July, uh, so far, and it's only a couple days into July, we already have 292. We've been averaging about 500 or so messages every month for uh, everything on the mailing list. So uh, thank you very much and uh, enjoy.